This is Mike Gidding from Third Eye Geoscience and we're going back to the well section window today to look at ghost curves which is another thing that I always forget how to do unless I'm doing it regularly. So what we've got here is two wells, the same two wells that we used to generate these lithologies in a previous video and I've put in a set of tops uh, related to the coal measures that you see in the um, in the well section and what we're going to try and do is move those tops across to this unpopulated well over here. So to do that what we do is we press on the ghost curve button and then you can see that there are a number of options here. There's a single log ghost curve, a multi-log single track ghost curve and a multi-log multi-track ghost curve. So let's keep it simple to start with and we'll go down to C1 and we'll choose the single ghost curve. And all you do here is you drag across the interface that you want to correlate and then we have a curve which we can drag across and if we line it up with that density spike We might be happy with that. Now there's an option here to drop the ghost markers by clicking this button or hitting shift G. The problem with that is that we will drop all the markers that we have uh, dragged across and you can see here that we've picked up this Barracuda shale. So to get rid of that we hover over it till we get the double arrow and we hold down shift and click it and then it's turned off. Now we can drop the ghost markers and turn off our ghost log and we can see that we've got something that's in pretty much the right spot. We might want to move it a little bit up or down but it's pretty good. Okay so that's the simplest way to do it. Next we're going to try and get these bottom three here C2 to C4 in place. So to do that we're going to press the ghost curve again and this time we'll choose the multi log multi-track option and we can go through like so and if we keep an eye on what's going on over here it's probably these three here and we can grab the curve and drag all of the curves so I like to keep a little bit of space so that I can kind of get this in the right position so I might pop that bottom one in the right spot and then we can either change the elevation of the whole thing or the height of the whole thing or we can actually grab any one of these markers and drag it into what we think is the right spot. And if we're happy with that we can then press the drop ghost markers option, turn off the ghost and inspect to see whether we can do any better, maybe a little bit like so. Okay, um, let's do the top section now. Another ghost and we'll go from here down to there. And again we grab the curve, drag it across Try and figure out where we belong and let's let's line up on the C10 and 11, C10 and 9. Okay and then we need to move up a little bit with our other markers, so that one's probably coming to there and then the one below it would be coming down to here. Okay, and then the C10 is okay, the C9 comes up a little bit and then we've got this one here which would come down to here and then we've got a bit of a messy situation in here and I don't want to get that wrong so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down again the shift key and I'm going to turn those markers off and then I'm going to accept the rest 
and turn off the ghost curve. Just do a bit of tidying up if I need to. Everything else looks okay. And then we've just got this little section in the middle. So let's zoom in on that a little bit. And we'll try again. Another ghost curve. Drag it across. And now it should be a little bit easier for us to see what's going on. So we've got three coals there and three coals there. Happy with that. And this one we might drag up to here. And this one we can drag up to here. And let's see what happens. Okay, so that's given us a pretty good result. It can get a little bit confusing when you're trying to see through one set of logs to another. So what I would suggest is that before you start this exercise, you go up to your Home tab and go to Clone Window. You make an exact copy of that window and then move it to a, a another tab group on your other screen. Then you can look at both of these wells without being encumbered by the ghost overlay and compare that with what you're getting with the ghost overlay. In that way, you'll be able to see both cleanly and with the overlay. And hopefully that will help you unravel any complexities. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to say today. So thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, please just visit my website, 3ig.com.au, and um, drop me a comment or a question if need be. Thanks a lot.